part 98 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what anonymous methods are with an example. So, what is an anonymous method? In simple terms, anonymous method is a method without a name. They are introduced in C-sharp 2. They provide us a way of creating delegate instances without having to write a separate method. Now, let's understand what we mean by this statement. They provide us a way of creating delegate instances without having to write a separate method. Let's flip to Visual Studio. At the moment, I have this employee class with two properties, that is ID and name. And within the main method, we are creating a list of employees. And this list at the moment contains three employee objects with IDs 101, 102, and 103. Now, let's say we want to find the employee who has got an ID of 102 within this list. And in order to achieve that, we have find method. And if you look at this find method, what is what is it expecting as a parameter? Predicate of employee. Now let's right click on this find method and go to the definition on that. So it is expecting predicate of T. So let's see what this predicate of T is. So let's right click on that and go to the definition on that. Look at that. This predicate of T is actually a delegate. And look at the signature of this delegate. It returns Boolean and expects an object of type T as a parameter. In our case, T is employee because we are invoking the find method on list of employees. Look at this. The IntelliSense tells us that it is expecting a predicate of employee. So we are going to give an employee object to the predicate and that predicate is going to return a Boolean. Okay. So basically, this is the delegate instance that we need to pass as an argument to this find method. Now, what are delegates? Delegates are nothing but function pointers, meaning they point to a function. Now, in order for a delegate to be able to point to a function, when we create an instance of a delegate to its constructor, we pass the name of the function. Okay. So first, we need to create a function that we want the delegate to point to. Okay. So and the important decision that we have to make at this time is what should be the signature of that method. The signature of the, that method should match with the signature of this delegate. Okay, otherwise we'll get a compiler error. That's the reason why delegates are called as type safe function pointers. Okay, so delegates are type safe function pointers because the signature of the function to which they are pointing to should match with the signature of the delegate. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a delegate, which re uh, sorry, a function which returns a boolean and expects an object of type employee. So let's write that method here. So public, let's make it static, and this is going to return boolean, and let's call it find employee, and then to this we give an employee object. Let's call it emp. Okay, now what logic should we have here? Now, our initial requirement is we should be able to find an employee who has got an ID of 101 or 102 within this list. Okay, so what we are going to do is return emp.id equals 102. So basically, this expression is going to return true or false, right? So this method returns a Boolean, and this expression, if the passed in employee object's ID matches with 102, it returns true, otherwise false. Okay, now let's go ahead and create an instance of, you know, the predicate delegate. So predicate, and in our case, it's predicate of employee, and let's call this actually employee predicate. You can give it any meaningful name you want. Now. To the constructor of the delegate, what we need to pass, we need to pass the name of the function that we want this delegate to point to. In our case, the function is find employee. Look at that, the function you know that we pass returns Boolean and it expects an object of type employee. And if you look at this method, it returns Boolean, expects an object of type employee. So let's go ahead and pass this as an argument. Okay. And the next step is to actually pass this, you know, delegate to this list. Okay. Now, you know, this list contains employee object. So I'm going to say employee goes to, now we are going to pass each employee object to this method. So find employee, that's the method we want to invoke and then pass the employee object. Okay. 
So basically what are we doing here? You know, the first step is we have created this function. So that's our step one. And step two, we created an instance of a delegate. And that delegate is pointing to this function. And step three, we passed the delegate instance as a parameter to this find method. And then obviously, what is this find method going to return? It's going to return an employee object. So let's store it in an object of type employee. Let's call it employee equals um, that. And then let's print out the employee ID and name just to make sure that we have got the right employee. So ID equals and name equals. OK. So employee dot ID and employee dot name. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the output that we expect. Look at that, we got the uh, object that we expect. So basically, you know, what have we done? We have created a function and then we have created a delegate instance. This delegate is going to point to that function and then we have passed that function as a parameter. I mean, that delegate as a parameter to the find function. Okay, now let's see how we can make use of an anonymous method here. Okay, so what did we discuss? What is um, an anonymous method? Anonymous methods are introduced in C Sharp 2 and they provide us a way of creating delegate instances without having to write a separate method. Now, what did we do here? We wrote a separate method first and then we created an instance of a delegate. That delegate is pointing to that method. And then we are passing this delegate as an argument to this find method. Instead of having all this step one, two, and three, we can write this code in one line and eliminate you know, all these steps. Okay, So let's see how to achieve that using an anonymous method. And you have that here. Look at that. You know This find method is actually expecting a delegate to be passed. And we do that by using a delegate keyword. So this one right here is an anonymous function. So we want to return an employee object which has got an ID of 102. And look at that, we are using delegate keyword here. And then we have employee x. And then we are basically saying return x dot ID uh, you know, equal to 102. So this is an anonymous method. So we create anonymous methods using delegate keyword. OK, and uh, you know, Let's actually look at that in action. So let's comment out this part. We don't require that anymore. Let's comment out step two as well. We don't have to explicitly create an instance of a delegate. And within step three, what are we going to do? We are going to make use of the delegate keyword. So delegate. And this delegate, what does it expect? It expects an employee object. So we are going to pass that. And here, what are we going to do? So this is like a method body. We are implementing you know, um, the logic here. So what do we want to do? We want to return employee such that employee ID must be equal to 102. And done. So all that code is gone. So here, this one is an anonymous function. Notice that it doesn't have any name. It just has the body. OK, it's just like a function. So if we knock this out and look at that this is a function right let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the same output look at that the same output okay so basically anonymous methods provide us a way of creating delegate instances without having to write a separate method all right um, they're also useful if uh, we are subscribing for an event handler now, to understand that, I have a Windows Forms application here. So I have just created a new Windows Forms application. I have Form 1 here. Now, let's view the code of this Form 1. And within Form 1 load event, what we are going to do is create control dynamically. Let's create a button control. So let's call it button 1. OK, so button 1 equals new button. and button one dot text equals let's say the text on my on that button we want it as click me and when we click the button something should happen so button one dot click so look at this now you know when we click the button you know there should be an event handler so to this click event handler when we click the button 
you know this is what is the event handler method that gets executed okay and let's say all we want to do is display hello within a message box so message box dot show let's say hello you just clicked me All right. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure it works as expected. And by the way, we need to add that button to the form controls collection. So this this refers to in this case form one. So to its controls collection property, add our button one control. So we are dynamically adding the button one control here. So let's go ahead and run this. Click the button. Look at that. Hello, you just clicked me. Now again, look at this. Here we are creating an instance of a delegate, and this delegate constructor is, you know, taking a method name here as a parameter. So this delegate is pointing to this function. Now, do we really have to do that? Now you can make use of anonymous method if you want to. If if you don't plan to use this method, let's say for example anywhere, um, then you know you can, you know, create that as an anonymous method here if you want to. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can replace, you know, this with an anonymous method. So this is how we do it. Button one dot click again. Look at that. We are using the delegate keyword, and then you know, obviously, if you look at this event handler delegate here, if we right click on that and go to the signature, so this event handler delegate is returning void and expecting two parameters of type object and event args. So what we are going to do is when we create a delegate we specify the parameters are going to be these two so right here we'll simply say delegate and then pass these two as the parameters and then there we are going to have this code and you know we got a compilation error here that's basically because you know with this form load event we already have parameters with similar names so let's actually call this as um, send and let's call this event args for example okay so that we don't have that compilation error all right now we can get rid of this button one underscore click method altogether now so Let's go ahead and run this. Click the button. Notice that it still works the same way. OK, now again, here we are using anonymous methods. Now, look at this. This delegate now is expecting two parameters. OK, now do we really have to pass these parameters here? Because if you look at the implementation, we are not making use of those parameters. So it doesn't really make sense to pass them there. So what's going to happen if I get rid of these parameters? Let's run this and see if it works. Look at that, it still works. Okay, so basically the delegate parameters are optional. And that's what is described here. So with, with anonymous methods, delegate parameters are optional. Okay, which means this code can be rewritten like this. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.